Well, it's another beautiful morning, and we are glad to have you join us on your program, COVID-19 Updates Live on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network, NCBN, transmitting live from our studio here in Asokoro, Abuja. My name is Doi Dia, and I'm glad to have you join me on this program. As always, the program COVID-19 update is designed to bring to you latest figures of the COVID-19 infection in Nigeria and around the world with a view to educating our viewing populace on the scourge of the deadly virus, as well as some of the efforts being made by the federal government of Nigeria and other key players to ensure that the scourge of coronavirus is nipped in the board. And this morning, um, I have uh, someone who will be joining me um, virtually, who is the former uh, president, national president of the Nigeria Medical Association, NME, talking about Professor Francis Fadwili. Of course, he got vaccinated over the weekend and is willing to share his thoughts on the exercise and as a medical expert to tell us um, about some of the fears that has been expressed by a cross-section of Nigeria on the COVID-19 vaccines. So you will get to hear from him after this time out. So make yourself comfortable as we begin the program after this time out. <laughs> Fellow Nigerians, follow the instructions on social distancing. The irresponsibility of the few can lead to the death of many. Your freedom ends where other people's rights begin. The security agencies have risen to the challenges posed by this unprecedented situation with gallantry and I commend them. I urge them to continue to maintain uttermost vigilance, firmness, as well as restraint in enforcing the restriction orders while not neglecting statutory security responsibilities. The best and most efficient way to avoid getting infected is through regular hygienic and sanitary practices as well as social distancing. As individuals, we remain the greatest weapon to fight this pandemic. By washing our hands regularly with clean water and soap, disinfecting frequently used surfaces and areas, Cuffing into a tissue or elbow and strictly adhering to infection prevention control measures in health facilities, we can contain this virus. Welcome back. It's still COVID-19 update live on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network, NCBN. And of course, today we're looking at the COVID-19 vaccination, which has begun. And of course, there are a lot of prominent Nigerians who have been vaccinated. One of them, like I said earlier before that break, uh, is the former chairman of the Nigeria Medical Association, NME, talking about Professor Francis Faduile. Of course, he has been on the forefront since the outbreak of the uh, deadly coronavirus which broke out in Nigeria. So, he has a lot to tell us um, this morning, so he will be joining me via virtually. So, um, 
if you can hear me, Prof, um, can you share your thoughts on the coronavirus vaccine? You were vaccinated over the weekend, so can you share your thoughts? Hello, Prof. Well, um, we're having some technical. Okay, um, I've been told he's now live. Can you hear me, Prof? If you can hear me, can you share your thoughts on the coronavirus vaccine which you received? Can you share your thoughts on it? How does it feel? Well, thank you. I want to say that I feel very happy that I was uh, given uh, the coronavirus uh, vaccine uh, on Friday and it's part of those that were sent to the Lagos State as a staff of Lagos State University College of Medicine. Uh, they have uh, informed the doctors to get themselves available. Uh, we had a very seamless uh, process of getting the uh, COVID vaccination. And uh, I think the general uh, view of those of us who were there was uh, that it was a great thing and that uh, the distribution has been good enough. All we just need to do is to see that uh, we have more people coming out to receive the vaccine. Again, Prof, that um, we saw that when the COVID-19, prior to the arrival of the COVID-19 vaccine, there was uh, a, a workshop uh, by the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, where the Minister of Health was also in attendance. And one of the things said was that people who want to get vaccinated should register online. We saw that even at that event, some medical um, experts were registered immediately. Uh, for you as a medical ex expert, um, was there any online registration before you got your booking for the vaccination? Well, certainly that is uh, the procedure that has been uh, put out for us to get the vaccination. I did the online uh, uh, registration and uh, it was also seamless. We were able to get the, um, the thing done within a short period. We have our picture taken. They have the request for some uh, information about our age or uh, other comorbidity if we have. and. Within a short period, we were able to conclude it and uh, we were slated to receive the vaccine almost uh, once we have uh, completed it. So we did it, we passed through that stage too. Experts, of course, um, there are a lot of concerns that have been raised about uh, the efficacy of the vaccine and people expressing fears. Uh, especially owing to the developments that happen in Denmark and in some European countries about blood clotting and all of that. Remember that before now, we've had a lot of complaints and people expressing fears about the veracity of this um, vaccine. Now, uh, now that you have gotten it, is there any fear? And for those who are already expressing that fear, what really we, would you like to tell them? Thank you very much. Uh, I must state that as a, a new drug, there are some reaction and side effect or adverse effect, if I must put it that way, that we will be expecting to see. But it's also important for us to alert people that it is not enough for us to just have one uh, reaction or side effect and for us to say that this drug is not good enough. Uh, we have had several reactions to ordinary penicillin that we take year in, year out. A lot of people still die uh, from a uh, hypersensitivity reaction. And uh, even with that, we have not uh, stopped penicillin because for the greater number of people, it's doing wonders. Uh, by going back to COVID vaccination as it is, I know that in some European countries, they had this fear 
that uh, they, it causes uh, blood clot within the patient. But those who have this type of reaction are already having suspected clotting uh, uh, issue within their body. So it's not a de novo. It's not that once you take it, then you have some. It is those who are predisposed to have blood clot that uh, they have shown that uh, they, they now had uh, some clot. But the important thing we must note is that it is not yet confirmed that it is the vaccination that causes uh, the blood clot because somehow there are some things that you see that occurs close to one event. You may just want to say, well, it looks as if it is this event that uh, causes it, but in, in scientific realm, we must be able to research it and find out the process and confirm within a, a, a reasonable level that it is related. So it has not been found out that is the virus is a vaccine that is a uh, potentiating blood clot. And even AstraZeneca and the World Hematology Association, they have come out and uh, they have uh, re-emphasized that they have any link whatsoever to say that the vaccination increases to having clotting uh, uh, episodes within them. So I can tell you, for those of us in Nigeria, thousands of us have, re have received it. There have not been a single adverse reaction that will uh, make uh, the patient uh, or the receiver to go for any intensive care yet. And I can tell you, we are very safe, and we can advise Nigerians to get themselves uh, prepared and available to receive the COVID-19 uh, vaccine. Okay, Professor Fadwile, my next question to you has to do with community, the fear of community transmission, which, of course, you recall that um, during the first lockdown um, and the second lockdown, you were, the, you were then the national president of the Nigerian Medical Association, NME, and of course, you were one of the frontliners. You were one of those who were at the forefront of the fight against this pandemic. Now, will you say that the government has done enough in terms of creating awareness so that people at the grassroots uh, can get the necessary information about coronavirus uh, pandemic and of course the vaccination but let before then let's take the latest updates of the uh, COVID-19 transmission as given by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and it says a new um, figure of 120 cases of COVID-19 infection has been recorded by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, with Lagos having 32, Rivers having 25, Kaduna 20, Bayesa 13, Kano 7, Jigawa 5, Bruno 5, Abia 4, or your state also having three new confirmed cases, Plateau 2, Federal Capital Territory 1, Ogun 1, Nasarawa 1, Imo 1. And this brings the total of the confirmed cases of COVID-19 infection in Nigeria to 160,657, with 145,000 399 persons already treated and discharged. And sadly, Nigeria has recorded 2,013 cases of COVID-19 uh, related complications. And on the global scenes, we have uh, a total of 461,105 new confirmed cases. This brings the total confirmed cases to 119 million 220,681 um, cases of COVID-19 infection, and the world has recorded 2,642,826 deaths resulting to COVID-19 complication. And on vaccine administration, as a 
10th of March 2021, uh, a total of 300 million uh, 2,228 persons have been vaccinated of the COVID-19 vaccine. And also on the regional breakdown, we have America, the total figure now standing at 52 million 775,904. Europe, 41 million 39,452. Southeast Asia, 13 million 884. Uh, 1,388. Eastern Mediterranean, 6,860,421. Africa, of course, Nigeria's continent, having 2,948,316 cases of COVID-19. Western Pacific, 1,711,455. Of course, those are the figures of COVID-19 infection in Nigeria and around the world. Now let's come back to our guest who is joining us virtually, Professor Francis Faduile, who is the immediate past national president of the Nigeria Medical Association, NME. Uh, before uh, we took that breakdown of COVID-19 infection in Nigeria and around the world, I was asking you about the fear of community transmission. And I want to get your thoughts on, is the government doing enough in terms of creating awareness, especially at the grassroots level? Now we've seen that the, the administration of COVID-19 vaccine has begun. We've seen a lot of prominent people, including yourself, coming out freely to go and take this vaccine. But there are a lot of Nigerians who are still skeptical and some um, still saying they, they don't trust this process. So what is your thought in terms of awareness and enlightenment of the people, especially at the grassroots level? Thank you very much. I think the government is as much as they believe they can. Unfortunately, uh, what they have done is not uh, enough because um, the world has gone fast with the uh, social media and uh, all the efforts of in uh, educating the people around the and all sort of uh, uh, conspiracy theory as uh, Feeling the social media landscape, and uh, sometimes if you that knows uh, that know the truth, you want to be almost convinced because a lot of information out there. I think the government needs their uh, active, and that uh, they need they, they they find a way of percolating into the. Uh, uh, the, the, the community to uh, correct all the infections, uh, all the wrong impressions uh, that is uh, going everywhere. Who uh, have uh, come out and said that they needed to be sure that uh, the vaccine is not going to make them infertile. Some have said that the vaccine uh, is going to make uh, uh, them to have a, a number, is going to, uh, they are going religious, is going to give them some specific numbers that uh, it is the mark of this. Some are saying, how can they get a vaccine within a short period of time? And a lot of myths have been created around the COVID 19 infection as well as the virus, uh, as well as the uh, vaccine. So we are trying our best. We need the government to up the ante. We need the government to go to what uh, uh, it is now working most around the people. Uh, that is the social media. We need to uh, improve in the uh, media and social media uh, uh, awareness for people so that they can get to know. But importantly, uh, many people still doubt if it is true that we have uh, COVID-19 affecting people. Even when they have deaths, they still want to see 
uh, who died, how can you be sure? But I think some of the information from the government has percolated down to the community. Many of them are aware, though they are still in denial phase, but we still need to do more so that people can also voluntarily come out and get this vaccine uh, taken. And it is important for them to know that the vaccine, once it is taken, it gives you a, 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 an immunity to severe infection and it stops you from being able to transmit the infection to the next person. So it has those two safe ways of being you and guiding community. And I think we need to do more on that. But there is one other question I would like to ask you, which, of course, you've raised as about uh, the morbidity we've recorded, death resulting from COVID-19. But that will be after this uh, short break. You're still watching COVID-19 update live on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network, NCBN, transmitting live from our studio here in Asokoro, Abuja. We we'll go on this short break. When we return, continue the conversation. Don't go nowhere. Welcome back. You're still watching COVID-19 updates live on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network, NCBN, transmitting live from our studios here in Asokoro, Abuja. And I have with me virtually uh, the former president of the Nigeria Medical Association, NME, talking about Professor Francis Faduile, who is sharing his thoughts on the COVID-19 vaccines. Before we went on that short break, Prof, if you can hear me, of course, I was just saying I will ask you about death resulting from COVID-19 um, infection and complication. Now, you are a pathology uh, and, of course, an, a forensic expert. Why is it that there is this serious um, and very stringent protocols around death resulting from COVID-19? 19. Of course, when people die, we expect that the body will be released to their families to give them befitting burial. But A, we've seen that as soon as people die of COVID-19 complication, government take over the bodies and all of the usual ceremony and rituals that we are known for in Africa is no more there. And immediately they bury them under very strict surveillance by the NCDC and other uh, tax force enforcement agency. Why is it so, Prof, in less than two minutes? Well, thank you very much. I think uh, we need to guide against uh, community transmission. People need to follow the necessary protocol so that we do not transmit, transmit it. And I think that is why the government is also trying to ensure that the normal protocol. It is important for or know that those who have died from COVID-19 can still, if we have not been able to guide ourselves very well, we can still have some uh, transmission around it. You know how we touch our body, how we uh, interact with uh, our, our, our departed loved ones. So we need to put that guy, uh, uh, gay, uh, that uh, barrier so that we do not transmit it to more people and we have more uh, issue in our hand. And I think that is one of the good ways in which we have been able to curtail that uh, spread, especially among those who have died. So what will be your parting word to both the federal government of Nigeria, not just federal government of Nigeria, state government, local government, and other uh, stakeholders in the fight against COVID-19 um, pandemic, and of course the people who are the receiving end? What will be your parting word? In less than one minute. My parting, my parting shot is that COVID-19 is real. Let the people internalize it 
and work to guide against being affected. The government needs to do more to educate the people and let them see the reason why they have to follow the processes that they have put in place. And for the people, let us make ourselves to follow the protocols that the government has put in place, wash your hands, use uh, the, the face mask, uh, uh, the sanitizer. And if you have opportunity of having the vaccine, go and take the vaccine. It is, a, it is the best thing to do, and we must follow the rules. Thank you very much. We want to thank you for your time, Professor Francis Faduile, the former uh, president and chairman of the Nigeria Medical Association. We wish you well. Of course, uh, you were also a governorship aspirant in Ondo State. We wish you well in your endeavor as you move on, and we pray that um, all of the efforts being made by government will yield positive results. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And so, viewers, uh, that will be where we should draw the curtain on this edition of your program, COVID-19 Updates, live on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network, NCBN. Of course, it is our responsibility in NCBN to go the extra mile to ensure that you are well informed on some of the developments around you. So, keep your date with us, same time tomorrow, when we shall be bringing to you another interesting package on your program, COVID-19 Updates Live. My name is Donny Dia, saying Happy New Week. Bye-bye for now.